Coming up. Someone is kicked out. Go away, you're not BMW technician. We need bigger brakes. And I do weird stuff with the steering wheel. It's time for 330i front brake upgrade. We have refurbished 330i brake calipers, 330i brake disc with bullet holes, brake pads, some hardware, padware sensor, and beautiful stainless steel brake lines. These were kind of expensive, 120 euros, but I love these. I have them on my E39 M5 for quite a while, and they're just the business. Made in Germany. And also 330i calipers, because they are different than what's currently on the car. I had to buy these used and they were looking kind of ugly so I cleaned them up and sprayed them a little bit so they match freshly refurbished calipers. Fun fact, if you want to buy 330i calipers, just the front ones, in Germany it's gonna set you back 200, 250 euro. So I searched in Poland and got these same 330i used calipers for 80 euros shipped. And of course, I'm gonna send these back because you pay deposit when you buy a refurbished one. And these were not that expensive. I wanna say 80 euro, something like that. And it saves me a lot of time and trouble to, well, to clean them up, refurbish, blah, blah, blah. So this is just easier and more efficient. Let the operation papaya commence. This brake disc is hot garbage. I don't know what kind of brand is this, but judging by the state of it and the fact that it's not like too much worn, it's something cheap and there's a lot of hot spots and whatnot. So I'm kind of looking forward to removing this because it's also vibrating under braking. And this is the 325i caliper, the smaller one. It's working fine, but we need bigger brakes. Difference is this. 330i brake disc is bigger, better, prettier. First, remove the caliper. There you are. I'm gonna replace the brake caliper last because I wanna make sure that everything else fits. <laughs> Excellent, remove the bracket. That's the old bracket, that's not usable. The 330i one is different, bigger, as you can see. But the holes line up perfectly. Now we can zip out the brake disc, smack. Oh, are you refusing to cooperate? Look how ugly that is. I'm really wondering what kind of brand is this. Nothing, no markings whatsoever. So that's junk. The wheel bearing is good, it's very good. So let's clean the hub. All right, that's nice and clean. Let's try the brake disc. Fits like a glove. Look up the torque, I wanna say 16 newton meters. 16, I was right. Good, now I'm gonna mount the bracket. Plasti lube. Good, that's all lubed up and ready to be installed. Hundred and ten. So I can mount the caliper now. Good. Add the guide pins. And repair manual says not to lube up the guide pins. Pop this one in. Look at that. Where is the don't move? Oh, it must be a superstar. Caps, the clip. Good, now we can remove the old caliper and replace the brake line. First, I'm gonna disconnect the pad wear sensor. So for this, you need to have proper spanners. And I have these, these are really, really good for this stuff. There you are. Brake fluid is my least favorite fluid of all fluids. Out comes the caliper. Now we need to connect our beautiful steel braided brake line first into the caliper. 
give it a good snug. That's enough. New padware sensor. And there we are, this side is done. Now I just need to copy paste on the other side. So here's the situation on the rear end of the car. I cannot do the 330i brake upgrade here because the trailing arm would have to be replaced. The brake disc for the 330i has a bigger drum diameter. So you have to use different parking brake shoes and then you need a different hub and you have to replace the entire trailing arm in order to follow that to fit. And I'm gonna do that when I buy the donor car because then I'm gonna have parts and it's gonna be much easier to do. And now we're gonna move on to my least favorite activity, bleeding the brakes, which on a four post lift, it's, it's like going to the bathroom without your phone. You just want it done and move along. It's no fun. So brake bleeding done. You can see the organized mess here. Blood about a liter of fluid. I'm gonna go bed in the pads and then a little bit later, I'm gonna let you know how it feels, but bigger brakes, bigger calipers, it should feel better. Quick update on the brakes. I've covered around 1,500 kilometers since I installed 330i brakes, and this is easily in top five things that I've done on this car. The car is just coming to a stop much quicker and much better compared to before. And that's simply because of the bigger rotors and calipers, of course, but also better hardware. All of the old stuff that I removed was just some off brand. When it comes to the brake pedal feel, it's pretty much the same as before, nice and firm, but I can really feel the braking power being better when I use the car on the Autobahn. And that's really important for me. So big thumbs up for this mod. How's my hair looking? Good? Great. It's, I have no idea how much time later and the touring has been a bad boy. Well, it's been a good boy for the most part. We covered 7,000 kilometers trouble free, but recently it threw, I need more money from you light at me, or if you want to be technical, check engine light. And it's having a misfire on cylinder five with fuel cut out. And that typically means it's not the coil. So I did the swap a just in case, move the coil from number five to cylinder two, cylinder two to five, and the misfire came back on cylinder number five again. So it's not the coil. The misfire comes only when I push the car really hard, specifically when I drive about 120 kilometers per hour, then it throws a check engine light and it works like a tractor because it's working on five cylinders. Shut it off, turn it back on, and then it comes back to normal. So when I drive it normally, everything is fine, but when I push it, it's not. So I have a couple of things in mind. Check for vacuum leaks, possibly math, possibly clog cats, hopefully not. What the hell is that? Shoo! Go away. Who are you? Go away, you're not BMW technician. Sorted. I also need to change the oil and flush. What the? I don't know what's going on. Someone dropped something apparently. I need to change the oil again because it's still really sludgy. I said earlier that I'm gonna do short oil changes and that's what I've been doing. I've done like, I don't know, four or five and the oil filter is still full of sludge every time we do an oil change. So it's slowly cleaning, but it's a long process. Now I'm also gonna use the liquid moly engine flush and after all of that is done and we check for vacuum leaks or whatever else, we're gonna go for a spin and see if this thing is fixed. Other than that, it drives really nice. I mean, I drive it 180, 190, and it screams at 5,000 RPM in the fifth gear, but it goes. So I don't really care. I'm gonna use all the power horses RPM out of this thing until it blows up. So this is the recipe that we're going to follow. Fresh Fire W40 and engine flush. But the engine is full with oil and I don't wanna overfill it with this because this is half a liter. So we're gonna withdraw 500 milliliters from the engine. Take the oil reading device out. I've just cleaned this tube and we're gonna shove it in there. There we are. That oil is disgusting. Ridiculous. Cheers. Good. Let the engine run. 10 minutes. And then we're gonna change the oil. All right, kill the engine. Lovely. Refit the plug.
Good. Add the oil. Dump the new filter in. The way you check the oil level on the M54 engine is you start it, you drive it, get it up to temp, then shut it off, wait five minutes, and then you pull the dipstick out and check the oil level. That's what the repair manual says. To be totally honest, this is the old filter and it is a lot better than before. A lot less sludge now, even with the flush. Before all of this was just full. Progress it is. Now we're gonna check for vacuum leaks using a machine that makes smoke. And we can remove the air filter box, MAF, and connect it onto intake boot here. Remove the MAF and we're gonna clean it. MAF cleaner. I'm gonna be honest with you, in my experience, this does nothing. If your MAF is bad, this is not going to fix it. Let it air dry. And the link to this machine is in the description below. Put it there a long time ago. Hook it up. Why is my glove leaking? Glove leaking a tiny bit, but everything else is fine. No other leaks. Only my stupid glove. Yeah, definitely nothing else leaking. That's about to pop. No vacuum leaks. <laughs> Let's put it back together and go for a quick blast down the Autobahn. See if there's any difference. Although I didn't do anything else other than changing the oil. So there's probably not gonna be any difference. Why do people drive smart cars? They're stupid, they're not smart. Jeez, that one is smoking. By the way, I learned to appreciate how much I like the original steering wheel in the M5, because this is the refurbished one with new leather and it's a little bit thicker. And I really do prefer the original one that's thinner. It feels better in hands than the thicker one. This one is not so bad, but I'm not the fan of the perforated letter. All right, let's give it some and see what happens. Full throttle. Yeah, there it is. Right on cue. Check engine light is back. Houston, we have a problem. I need to scratch my wallet some more and figure out what's going on. I forgot to mention it, but of course I checked the spark plug on cylinder number five and it looks fine. I did that when I was swapping coils. Next step, drive the car with MAF disconnected. If the miswire doesn't come back, then we know that we have failed MAF. I've got some news. The simple troubleshooting of unplugging the MAF sensor and driving the car like that yield results. With the MAF out of the equation and the car essentially running on default settings, there are no issues. No check engine light, no misfire, the engine is working beautifully. Which means we have a faulty MAF sensor. And as I said earlier, MAF cleaners don't do anything in my experience. If your sensor is faulty, MAF cleaner is not going to fix it. I have a brand new one here. And it is absolutely essential that you use the original BMW part or OEM one. In this case, I went with OEM, which is VDO. Yes, it was expensive, 150 euros. And yes, you can get a cheaper one that's five times cheaper, but it's also going to give you five more problems. For all of these little sensors, camshafts, crankshafts, whatever position sensor, even the suspension, I mean, all of the parts on this car, it is essential that you use OEM parts. Otherwise, you're going to be chasing problems the left and right. Just stick with what the poster says and you'll be all right. OEM parts, they are more expensive, but in the long run, they are worth it. Trust me. Now we're going to install this one and see if that solves our issue. Out with the old. Into the dumpster you go. I also like to install new air filter when I do the new MAF and I ordered one and it's coming later today. So I'm gonna do that a bit later. But now let's chuck this in. We'll go for a test drive a little bit later. Now we need to address a couple of more things on the car. A really annoying thing that I have right now is this. When I move the steering wheel up and down, there's play in it. And this annoying clicking noise. This is really pronounced when I drive over potholes and stuff because the whole steering wheel is shaking and you can hear that clicking noise and it's just driving me mad. I believe the cause for this is the U-joint on the steering column. I already checked it, it has some play on it. Yeah, I was afraid of that. It's not the U-joint. It doesn't have not even a tiny bit of play. Now you can feel the play here. I hit my head on the ramp earlier. I'm still discombobulated. Anyway. I mean, this is unacceptable.
I'm gonna take apart the entire car if I have to. Oh, maybe I found it. Do you see this white plastic here? It has a ton of play there. Oh, oh. Oh, okay, okay, I fixed it. <sighs> I just adjusted the steering column and now it's not clicking anymore. So I think we can edit all of this out and pretend I didn't do any of this. And I just did that in the first place and the clicking noise was gone. I took the entire car apart and now the noise is gone. And I had the steering wheel adjusted in position that I really like. I just, I cannot believe I took the entire car apart and all I have to do is adjust the freaking lever. Yeah, let's just edit all of this out. It didn't even cross my mind to try and adjust the steering column. Perfect. So now I need one of those devices they have in Men in Black. Chick. Erased. Another thing we're going to do while underneath is replace the power steering line that's leaking and upgrade control arms to M Sport once. The current ones are standard and they are 20 years old. They have 200,000 kilometers on them and I bet they're not in the great shape. So I just want to have fresh components there as well. Gotta get the car up in the air. The brakes are doing great. Remove the nut. And since I don't care about this ball joint, I'm gonna use a fork. Eye protection and ear protection. There it is. Nice. Now the big ball joint, the nut is there. I'm not going to use a fork here because I don't want to damage the subframe. So I'm just going to beat on the control arm until it pops. Huh. There it is. Fairly easy. And I'm not replacing the bushings because I've already done those. So we're going to reuse them. One control arm out. We need to remove and reuse the bushing oh, it's easy because i used silicone last time these are the new control arms oem lamforder and their m sport and the difference between the m sport and the standard ones is that these are essentially reinforced they have beefier ball joints and they're meant to work with the m sport suspension stiffer springs stiffer shocks which is what this car has that's why we are doing this upgrade so the control arm bushing that i installed a while ago is still fine so we're going to reuse it silicon spray this is ready to go into the car <laughs> oh you bastard I don't think I can fit a torque crunch in here, so I'm just gonna go with good and tight. That'll do it. So I'm gonna remove the wheel speed sensor so I can fit the torque crunch in there. Put that on the side. 65. The left side control arm done. And now it's rinse and repeat with the right side. Lovely. The power steering line is leaking beautifully. We're going to replace that as well. First, it's connected from the power steering pump. Get ready for the waterfall. Oh, come on. Oh, nice. Now I need to unbolt it from the steering rack. There we are. It's the banjo bolt. Here's the replacement power steering line, crush washers and O-ring. Banjo bolt with new crush washers. That's nice and tight. Now clean it up, go up top, refill the fluid. 
all buttoned up, let's go for a test drive. See if we solve the check engine light. Nice. Man, the suspension feels tighter than ever. Razor sharp. The old ones weren't particularly that bad, but it's just a lot tighter with the new ones. Full power. The guy's in my way, move. There we are. 160, 170, 180, screaming at 5,000 RPM, but it's going, and no check engine light, 200, all right, fourth, summer tires on 180 full power no check engine light I guess we can call that fixed I mean the steering is just phenomenal on this car let's do another pull It goes 180, 190, 200, pulls clean, no check engine light, 210. It is a happy car again. And I can cruise on 180 again. It's not comfortable cruise because there's a lot of wind noise. The engine is screaming at 5,000 RPM, but I don't care. We're gonna drive this car until some stuff starts flying out of the engine. Time to end the episode. And the next phase for this project is complete exterior M Sport conversion. And that means style 135 18 inch rims wrapped in Falcon tires. I just had these freshly powder coated, so they look absolutely beautiful. Also, M Sport bumpers and side skirts, they're sitting right over there. I just washed them and they're drying in the sun and I'm about to drop them off at the paint shop. All of that is going to completely transform the way this car looks from the outside. Super excited about that. Anyway, check out the new merchandise. We have some new design, front and back. There's hoodies, drinking devices, posters and whatever else. So give it a look, I'd appreciate it. The link is in the description. As always, thank you very much for watching and consider clicking on the subscribe button if you enjoy the video, that is. See you in the next one. Right, let's load up the touring and go to the tire shop and the paint shop. Adios. Mm -hmm.